Welcome to Greg's Corner on the Diana Photography channel with another macro video. This time around, about getting started in macro photography without breaking the bank. Macro can seem like a very expensive type of photography with many of the dedicated macro lenses at a thousand dollars or above. But today I'm going to show you how you can start out in macro photography with gear that you most probably already own. The most popular and common ways of getting more magnification out of your standard zoom and prime lenses is by adding extension tubes or macro conversion lenses. Another popular way is using reverser rings and reversing the lens, but I will not cover this option in today's video. An extension tube increases the distance between your sensor and the lens, allowing it to focus closer and resulting in higher magnifications. It is a hollow tube without any lens elements, some with and some without electrical contacts, but the ones without do, are not suitable for modern G-type lenses for Nikon or any mirrorless lenses as you lose aperture and focus control. For mirrorless and G-type lenses, it is best buying the ones with contacts. They are not much more expensive than the ones without. A macro conversion lens, on the other hand, is an optic that increases the magnification of your lens. It works best with uh, telephoto lenses and the longer the telephoto, the higher the magnification will get. So should you get an extension tube or a macro conversion lens, is one better than the other? It really depends on what type of lens you want to use it with and what level of magnification you want to achieve. With extension tubes, there is a limitation that the length of the extension tube cannot be longer than the focal length of the lens, adding a 58 mm long extension tube to a 35 mm lens will cause the minimum focus distance to be inside the lens or so close to the front element that the lens itself will throw a shade on your subject. Another limitation is the distortion qualities of the lens you're using it with. If the lens is corrected by software in body, those corrections will not work once the extension tube is added. And this gets us to the types of lenses. Your standard zoom lenses like the 24 to 70 on full frame or the 16 to 50 on an APS-C body may or may not work well with extension tubes depending on the quality of the lens, but even expensive 24 to 70 f 2.8 lenses may not work well with extension tubes depending on the distortion and focus breathing characteristics of the lens. Most standard zoom lenses have focus breathing which results in the working distance being too small limiting the options for lighting your subject and possible compositions. Putting the lens at any other angle than straight on is not going to be possible and if your subject is live it will most certainly be spooked by something getting that close. But still 24 to 70 standard zoom lenses are a good option to pair with extension tubes for up to a certain magnification and with the aforementioned limitations. For the Nikon Z APS-C shooters specifically, the 16 to 50 lens shows all the faults of the lens once a 29mm extension tube is added and the software corrections cannot do the job. Orange and blue chromatic aberrations appear on high contrast edges and the lens becomes very soft due to distortion or field curvature. The lens with the extension tubes still gets you a nice magnification bump and is good enough for flower sized objects and capturing even scenes. The reproduction ratio of the 2470 f4 at minimum focus distance is 0.3x. Adding a 29mm extension tube, the subject is too close and the shadow is caused by the lens. A magnification bump compared to the lens's original magnification can be achieved by not focusing at the mi minimum focus distance, but a bit further away towards infinity, also resulting in a good working distance. It is also important to mention that in video, combining these lenses with the DX Crop 4K recording mode of the Z camera bodies, you can get an additional 1.5 times magnification bump, which will get you close enough to flowers and larger insects like bees. When seeing some macro b-roll footage on a previous video, one of our commenters mentioned that hiking up a mountain with a macro lens would be challenging for him. Thomas, you do not have to hike with an additional macro lens weighing down your backpack. All this macro footage was taken in 4K DX crop mode with the Z6 and the 24-70 f4 lens. 
Extension tubes work best in my experience with standard prime lenses like a 50mm or an 85mm lens. The maximum reproduction ratio of the 50mm is 0.15x with a minimum focus distance of 1.32 feet or 0.4 meters on full frame. On the Z50 it can get you 1 to 1 magnification with 29mm extension tubes and a working distance that allows the usage of on-camera flash with a diffuser. Here are some images I took with this setup. This lens is quickly becoming my favorite for macro photography and that says a lot since I own three other dedicated macro lenses. It is easy to use and handhold, the image quality is spectacular, framing up images is also easier than say with the 105mm lenses. Getting good images in a row is a breeze as this sequence of a bumblebee shows. I was never able to get this many in focus and well composed images with any other lens including my most expensive macros. Another use case for extension tubes is on telephoto zoom lenses like this 70 to 300. It reduces the minimum focus distance of the lens from 1.2 meters or close to 4 feet down to 0.8 meters or 2.62 feet and gets your magnification bump from 0.25 times up to 0.446 times which gets you close to macro magnification territory. This kind of magnification and working distance is great for photographing skittish insects like butterflies, bees and dragonflies. And again, combining this with the APS-C crop of the Z50 or the DX crop in 4K video mode on the full frame bodies will get you to 0.67 times magnification. The 50 to 200 telephoto kit lens that came with your Z50 will give you similar magnification results, but I do not own that lens so I am not able to test it. Also, if it is corrected in software for color aberrations and distortion like the 16 to 50, you will encounter similar issues with it. Here are a few images to show what this combo is capable of photographing butterflies. Autofocus and image stabilization work perfectly with the extension tubes attached. Shooting from a distance makes following fast insects easy. The shooting experience is that of a leisurely photo sniping. The combo gets you great video quality too. Macro conversion lenses like the Raynox DCR250 work best on telephoto lenses, so anything above 100mm effective focal length. It is also important to mention that the adapter it comes with only works with 52 to 67mm filter sizes, and using it on a larger front element lens will cause severe vignetting in the frame edges. There are other products with 72 and 77 mm filter sizes, but those are in general more expensive and those will fit your 70 to 200 type of lenses. The magnification depends on the focal lengths being used. The longer the focal lengths, the higher the magnification will be, and although this is a bit counterintuitive at first, the magnification will be at its highest when the lens is focused to infinity and not to closest focus distance. This is due to the focus breathing of the lenses. For example, the focal length of the 70 to 300 is only really 300 millimeters at infinity. And this is true for any other lens. Most lenses will have a bit of focus breathing and a true focal length length is always measured at infinity. Here are a few images made with the D5600 and the Z50 APS-C bodies and the 70 to 300 lens with the Raynox. This alien looking insect is smaller than a coffee bean and this picture is a stack of two images, one for each eye to be in sharp focus. The same goes for this fly, the object it is standing on is a normal sized screw head with a spacer.
As mentioned before, the Rainox will work with any lens that can go beyond 100mm focal length and it also works with the 18-140 type kit lenses. I tested it with the F-mount version of the lens that came with our Nikon D5600. When zoomed to 140mm and focused to infinity, it gets your reproduction ratio of 1.25 to 1 on the APS-C sensor. The filter thread is exactly 67mm, so vignetting is visible in the frame edges and if the lens is not zoomed to 140mm the vignette becomes more and more visible but this can be used artistically and made good use of. So how much will getting started in macro photography cost you if you already own a DSLR or mirrorless camera? The MyQ extension tube set for Z mount is $39.99. It will work with your standard 2470 type zooms, your APS-C kit lenses and your standard prime lenses above 50mm focal lengths. It will also work with your telephoto zooms like the AFP 70-300, both on full frame and APS-C. You can put it between the camera body and the FTZ adapter or attach native Z mount lenses. It does not matter for the functionality. The high the magnification increase will be on the prime lenses like the 50 or an 85 mm and will get you to 1 to 1 reproduction ratio. The Raynox DCR250 macro conversion lens is 70-25 and will work best with your telephoto zooms or even with your 18-240 type kit lens. The important part is that the focal length exceeds 100 mm. This will get you the most magnification bump on a 70-300 lens combined with an APS-C body. On a full frame camera with the 70-300 the adapter ring will be visible in the frame as a strong vignette. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and you got something out of it. Uh, if you have any suggestions or anything to add your own personal experience with different lenses, please post them below in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and watch some other videos from our channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye!